Okay, guys. So let's just review some things. So quickly, let's see if you could do these problems. Okay. So, I mean, we talked about these in the last video, how to do them, right? In fact, we calculate on all of these. So just to review, make sure your brain's in the right place. Make sure you know what you're doing with it. Let's see if you can do these. Remember we talked about that you'd have, you have part A plus part B. That's going to equal the total, right? You want to remember that. You're talking about either the total first part or the second part. Okay, go ahead. Take about, take a hit pause, do these, and remember we're going to write our proportions not like this. We're also going to sometimes write them out like this, but today you're going to write them out as with a colon in there, just like they have it there. Okay. All right. Okay, so this should be your answers, right? So when you're looking at this, you got to be asked, go back and look at your notes. I mean, there's a process to this. If you didn't get these right, then what is it you aren't understanding? Okay, and then you should have questions. Now, I'm going to come back and explain these a bit, but remember what, some of the things we talked about was if you have part A plus part B, that's going to equal the total. So we had roses and carnations in our total, right? And we had guppies and goldfish and our total. Okay, we talked about when you we use unit rates, we're always going to go to make this be one tau, right? So we had to divide this by eight, means we have to divide this by eight, okay? So if that's the thing you didn't get, well then, I mean, really, that's just a review and make sure you know what you're doing because the next step of this is to apply it. So when we're looking at this is which bag has the lowest price per pound. So which one's the cheapest? You've got to go now and say, well, this is $49 for 40 pounds. This is $23.44 for 20 pounds. And this is $9.88 for 8 pounds. Which one's the cheapest price? In other words, what's the cheapest dollars per pound, right? And that's what you have to do is calculate over here the dollars per pound. You have to calculate it, label it, and determine which one is, let's just say this is bag A, B, and C, right? So which one would be the lowest? So what you need to do is do what we did here with each one and calculate that. So right now, go ahead and just hit pause and calculate your unit rates. So you want to do your unit rate here. So if I were doing this one, I'd say I have $49 for 40 pounds. And really, I'm going to be honest with you, at this point, you can start using a calculator. So I would use a calculator with this. You can do the long division, but I'm not here to teach you long division. And and if you really need to learn long division, we'll keep practicing it and then check it with your calculator. Um, but when it comes to time on a quiz, you might want to use that calculator now. Okay. All right. So hit pause and calculate all of those. Okay. So you should have calculated these out to be that this one is $1.23 per pound. This is $1.17 per pound. And bag C is $1.24 per pound. So, I mean, these were actually, you had to round up, but it, you still, this is obviously, bag B is obviously the cheapest buy because it's only $1.17 per pound. Okay, so that's the lowest price per pound. You always round to the nearest cent, which is the nearest hundredth, right? Okay, that's all there is to that. It's just applying what we're... I mean, that's what a lot of what we're doing right now is we're, we talked about what a unit rate is and what a pre and, and a proportion 
Now we're just using it, right? So which brand should he buy? We're usually going to say which one is the better buy, right? So go ahead and do this one. Same thing he did in the last one. Just calculate out the unit rates and then tell us which one's the better, the lowest unit rate. If it's when we say which one should we should you buy, we're usually talking about which one is the cheapest price. Now, if you have something else you want to add to it, you could, but if it's not asking you this on Alex, you want to make sure you understand that what it's asking you to do is give it the best price. Okay, so go ahead and do those. Calculate them, see which one's the best price. Okay, so when you, you should have set it up. So you would have shown your work with this. If you didn't get these, then you'll come back later to see, to get a better explanation, right? But if you did get these, because we, we walked through on what to do with it here, right? And this is, again, this is review. So I showed reminded you how to find a unit price here. Then we did one here. This one's kind of the check to see if you know what you're doing. For Nutty, you should have gotten that it was 18 cents per ounce and that grandma's was 16 cents per ounce that bees is 17 cents per ounce that save a lot is 17 cents per ounce which means the cheapest purchase the cheapest that if, if we're just talking about cheaper is better then the better price is grandma's right that's the one brand they should buy okay and we can talk in class about you know why that's not always the case but because sometimes you're buying things because you like its flavor. You, you're you not worried about how much you're paying per ounce. But if they're asking it, they want to know which one's the better buy, which one's the cheapest price. Okay. So if you didn't get that, I'll come back later to the extended part of the video. And you can, you can watch it and see how we did that. Okay. You just go to that. But right now we're going to come into here. Okay, and we're just going to go to these real quick. So I want you just to do these. But remember what we do when we do an improper fraction, right? Or when we're doing these, okay, so these are um, compound fractions. So what you have to remember is what you're doing is you're saying this is this divided by this, right? So that means we're going to have one and two fifths divided by 10 21st. Okay, so what I want to do is make this improper. So this is going to be, it takes five to make a hole and I have one hole. That means I have five times one, which is five, plus the two is seven, I have seven fifths. And then I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal, right? So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of 10 21st is 21 tenths, right? And if I look at this, I know right now that I can't simplify this. So this is going to be 5 times 10 on the bottom, and I'm going to have 7 times 21 on the top. So I'm going to have 147 fiftieths, which means I have 100 fiftieths plus 47 fiftieths, which means I have two and 47 fiftieths, okay? Now, it's the same thing with this. I turned it in proper. This, is, this should be review, right? And so you do the second one.
Okay, so that should have come out to be two thirds. And again, I'll leave this math here. You can pause it, look at it, see what we did. See if you know what you might have done better, what you could have fixed if you did it right. But we're gonna move on from here. This should be review, right? So you should have gotten two thirds. If you didn't, then go ahead and look and see where your math doesn't look like my math. See if you can figure that out. And I'll come back at the end of the video and explain this, okay? But I'm trying to keep this short. And the purpose of understanding how to do that is we're going to go to unit rates, right? All right. So when we go to unit rates, again, we start with a ratio with units, okay? And then what we're going to do is make it so the denominator is one of those units, right? That, that's all we're doing with it. So when we look, it says round your answers to the nearest hundredth. So if I look, I say it says I have 85 pounds of 81 pounds of seed on a nine acre field. And they want to know how many acres can be planted per pound of seed. So that's what I need to. Remember that I'm, when I'm looking at this, I'm saying that this is the word per, right? That's the divider. And so they want to know how many acres. So I'm going to write the word out. Acres per pound. And if you don't know, that's a symbol for pound. But if, you don't, if, that, doesn't, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, you can just write pound or LB, right? That's another symbol for pound. And now we just plug in what they told us. They told us that we get nine acres for 81 pounds. We want to know how much for one pound, right? Because we want it to be a unit rate. And so that means we need to divide this by 81 to get 1, right? That means we have to divide this by 81. Okay? And if I look, that means I'm going to have 9 over 81, which is going to be 9 times 1 over 9 times 9. So it's, the 9 simplify. This is 1 ninth. So this is 1. My answer is that I have 1 ninth of an acre for every pound of seed. That's my answer. It's going to take one ninth. I get one ninth of an acre for every pound of seed. No, and that doesn't mean that's the way you would look at it. You might look at it, how many pounds of seed per acre. But that's not what their question was. You have to pay attention to their question. Okay, All right, so now do this one. It's the same steps. The difference is, it's, I mean, you're still, you're talking about a ratio, right? And you're going to come out with that ratio. You're going to make it to where it comes out, to where I have one, right? And they want to know miles. I mean, really, I'm looking at the beginning and saying average speed in miles per hour. So I know I'm going to put hours on the bottom and miles on the top. And I, if I were you, I would write it out in units first to be safe, to be careful, write out the units first so you get everything written out. And then make sure you're talking about this is miles per hour, right? And we're going to go ahead and erase this one here, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're going to have miles per, and we, this we want to be one hour, right? That, that's our. This is where our answer comes from. Now what we're going to do is plug in the numbers they gave us. They told us we went one and one third, one and one third miles in a quarter hour, right? In a quarter of an hour. So we're going to put that down here, one quarter. What that means, though, going back to what we did over here, right? We got to change this and say, because what we have to do is divide that by one fourth or... We could multiply it by four, right? So, but what we're really doing is saying we're going to have one and one third 
divided by one fourth, which means we're gonna have four thirds times four over one, which means we're gonna get 16 thirds, which means we're gonna have five and one third. So that means we're getting, if we're, we're dividing this by four, one fourth, right? We're multiplying it by four, because that's what we wound up doing, right? We wound up multiplying by four. So if we multiply this by four, we get that 16 thirds or five and one third. Miles per hour. Okay, so that's not very fast. That's like a 10 minute mile, so he's not real fast. Those of you that are running cross country right now, you know that, right? Okay. Okay, so these are the extra. That was instruction. Now, see if you can do these. If you can't, if you think you got it, if this all makes sense to you, um. I mean, we're going to talk about these ones in class, right? So see if you can do them. I'll put the answers up. If you can do them, you got it. If you don't, I mean, I can explain it in class or I'll do an extended video here. Okay. Okay. So hit pause. Do these problems. Let's see how you do. All right, so here you go. So when you looked at this first one, okay, hopefully you came up with 42 and three-fifths yards per hour or 42.6 yards per hour. Okay, for the second one, you should have come up with three and three-fifths miles, miles per hour or 3.6 miles per hour. And you should have been able to show your work, right? If you weren't able to show your work, you can't have credit, right? So just make sure you're showing your work. And you know, there's there's a lot, there's really not a lot of ways to set that up, but if I can see your work, then I think we're good. So again, showing your work on this one would have been like just saying, writing that out as two divided by two thirds, inverting and multiplying, you wind up with three, okay? And on this one, you wind up with three twenty-eighths. Okay, so you're done. If you understand how to do this, you're done. If you don't understand how to do this, then I'll go through it with you. Okay, so look it over. See if you can look at your notes from before because I've reviewed all of what we were doing in this up here. All you had to do was do this over again down here. That's all you're doing. Okay. Okay. And ask questions. We'll, we'll bring these up in class. Okay, that's the end. You should have taken notes. Hopefully you know what you're doing with this. If not, you got a quiz coming up on this. So hopefully you're going to be ready for this quiz. You just need to know these things. We think these are pretty simple. How to set up a unit rate. How to compare unit rates. Right? How to compare unit rates. So you have to create the unit rates, compare which one's greater and less, and then how to create a unit rate. That's that's basically all this is, is about creating unit rates with a little bit in it about doing complex fractions. Because there's fractions in the world and they make things complex. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Good luck. Have a good day. See you in class.